Hey guys, be right there with you. <laughs> Everybody doing all right today? Looks like I got a couple of minutes before people start gathering up. I feel like I'm doing a Mr. Rogers. All I need is a cabinet to open up and hang up my shirt or my welding shirt. <laughs> well, I'm not dating myself, am I? I'm old. There's no getting away from it. How is everybody this Friday? Panagiotis. Ah, I just checked um, your tracking number and it said that the delivery failed and it was unavailable. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. Maybe you track that uh, or track that package yourself. Because, um, I mean, the first one made it, but that was with FedEx or was it UPS? And this was USPS. So I don't know. Um, I know it was caught up in, um, what do they call it? When they, uh, the government was taking a look at it. Customs, that's the word I'm looking for. And I assumed it made it through customs and then uh, it was going to be going to you. But evidently... Something has gone awry, but at any rate, let's swing around and see what questions I missed what, two weeks ago now, because last week I was at uh, Road Atlanta and I really didn't take any questions, but I did um, announce that uh, we are in fact giving away that 2005 Honda CRF 450 that we have done so much work on. So if you would, uh, I'm sure they're going to drop a, uh, a link in the, uh, the chat, but if not, I think, um, the link is live on our, on our website now at partzilla.com. Doesn't cost you anything to, uh, to enter. And I think you can enter at least once a day. And there's, there's even some bonus codes. And if they, uh, if we have any bonus codes, if my, uh, if my team will drop them in the chat, I'll share them with you. I think they're worth like a, hundred extra entries per day so that's definitely worth doing but before we dive into that oh yeah they're they are paying attention down in florida or is it up north well we've got team members scattered everywhere yeah they've got it uh in the chat where you can enter to win and uh oh and today's um code is the bonus code is weisco good choice <laughs> All right. Wait, well, they, uh, I forgot the bonus code. Only tried it one time. Well, you can try again now, Paul. Let's uh, swing around and see, look at the questions that I may have missed uh, a couple of weeks ago. Dear, dear rector. Okay. Or D rector. Hi, John, my 2017 Polaris 1000 touring. I noticed there are two tiny holes on the cap of the front master. Okay. I assume you're talking about the front or the master cylinder for the brakes. Yeah. I, if I squeeze the brake lever down and look closely at these holes, I see the smallest amount of fluid seeping out through the holes or the holes for I'm afraid I'm over, um, over tightening. I don't want to strip out the screws and the holes. Well, as your, your system pretty much breathes a little bit, otherwise it'll, it'll, it'll lock up. It'll vapor lock. So it has to be able to, have a little cushion to pull and push against. So those two breather holes are doing just that, letting the uh, letting the braking system breathe somewhat. That's also another reason why it's so important to um, to bleed your brakes every so often because with those two little holes, guess what? It'll let lets air in, but also lets moisture in, and that does not work well in a braking system. That's what causes them to boil over most of the time and not function as they should. Anthony Young had asked me, I have an 01 Grizzly 600 and I just installed a wet clutch, but after installing the ATV, like it's in a, a low, a low reduction when riding, any help would be appreciated. Hmm. Not sure I follow that, that question completely, uh, Anthony, but I know that Grizzly 600, sure it went to 660. 
We did a, uh, a wet clutch rebuild on our Grizzly 700, and I would bet it is a very similar similar setup. So if you would go back, reference that video, and uh, just follow what I did. That's been like three or four years ago. So I don't remember each working point to really give you a guess as to why it would be holding back or not engaging fully because that interior clutch it, it, it's not a uh, it's not speed dependent. It's either engaged or it's disengaged. The only thing that's going to change your your gearing for the most part is your um, the belt system, the CVT system, because it, you know the Yamaha has two clutches. It has a centrifugal wet clutch that you're talking about. But then it also has the CBT system, which pretty much acts as its transmission. So I would bet it probably doesn't have anything to do with the wet clutch, something going wrong with your CBT system. So I want you to take a peek at that. Let's see what all we've got in our list. Uh, all right. So I already said hello to Panagiotis. And that package needs to find its way to you. <laughs> if they ship it all the way back to me and then I have to ship it again, <sighs> never mind. Just not even going to go there. Paul Gravinsky, hey, happy Friday, John. So I picked up a starter for his 1986 300 Bayou, and the damn thing was locked up solid. Oh, boy. I sure hope next time uh, the next one isn't that bad, isn't that bad. I may end up tossing this one back. Yeah, I've I've run into that before. You think okay, it's just going to be the starter. Sometimes it's a whole lot simpler just to pull that you know, inspection cover on the side of the engine and just make sure the engine's going to turn over. Um, you know, 99 times out of 100 is going to be the starter, but you found that one. Eh, sorry that happened to you, buddy. Cold War Man. Hello, John. I have a big problem with my, my 350 89 turned upside down. It just fell over when I wanted to fire it. I heard ticking and nothing. Ticking, nothing more. Kickstarter. I don't want to twitch what to, what could have happened. Whew. I'm having a hard time uh, following you there, guy. So you're telling me uh, you probably got a Rancher 350 and you turn it upside down and you went to fire it back up. You hear a lot of ticking. Um, well, more than likely, well, definitely. When he flipped it upside down, well, all the oil went out of the bottom of the engine where it usually sits and was working its way to the top. And it's going to take a little while for it to settle. I would think after it settles for a few minutes, if not a half hour, reprimes that pump and then uh, that should uh, get it back to where it should be. Um, probably wouldn't uh, hurt to go ahead and do an oil change. Bet you it's been a while. That way you know you've got the correct amount in there and didn't lose too much because it, it, it can go out through the breather and then fill up your, your air box and hence your air filter. Yeah, you'll want to check that as well. And then it's not going to have enough in the engine. So, yeah, sounds like it's time to do a little bit of a service on it and uh, make sure there's nothing uh, um, nothing wrong with it. And do, 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 do. DHL is also messing things up when the post office picks up. I know about that. Panagio just probably, yes, they told me the package didn't have a name on it. Really? it. Well, if it does find its way all the way back to me, we're going to, I'm going to go back there and check and verify the, because uh, the same girl shipped out this that she did the other one and she knows what she's doing, but we'll try it again. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to spend a couple hundred dollars in shipping just trying to get this thing to you, but a promise is a promise. So we'll we'll get it there eventually. Joseph Dean. Hi, John. Hope you are well. Yes, I am. I think. I don't know. What have you heard? <laughs> I have a squeak coming from my head when I kick it. Sounds like air escaping through the cam cover gasket. Because when I take the cam covers off, it doesn't squeak. Any ideas? God, how much blow by does this thing have? Um, I mean, every engine's they're not 100% efficient. Um, but if you've got blow by going past the piston rings, it's going to go into the crank and the rest of the engine and uh, will pressurize it for the most part. Is the breather system stopped up by chance? Hmm. You know, not, what make and model was this anyway? So let me know on that, Joseph. 
Uh, Joseph is also asking, do you ship CRF 450 parts to the UK? I believe so. I don't think there's uh, that's been turned off. All right, Ra Russell Fisher uh, says your show is cutting in and out. Oh, and he says it's good now. All right, Joseph came back to the bike in question. It was a 2009 Suzuki RMZ uh, 250 on the, on the question. All right, does that one have a breather hose? That one should have a, a breather hose with a one uh, a check valve going back to the air box. So look at that check valve. Make sure it's not a uh, it's not stuck or not letting it flow. So that, that would be my guess at this point. Marshall has asked me, John, I have a 2016 Honda Pioneer 100 or 1005. It has recently started grinding when you try to put it in reverse. Uh oh, sounds as if it's not fully engaging and doesn't go into gear. Any ideas? Um, I believe on the, uh, the Pioneers, they use an actual transmission. I mean, the real deal, like you, you would see in a, in a car. Um, and it sounds like things are um, not well on the inside. So evidently the gears are not locking in. Um, the, the synchronizer is maybe getting worn and it's not letting it fully engage. So there's no real great way around it. But before you start pulling it apart, go ahead and do a fluid change on it and just see if that, that helps it. I mean, if you're already hearing grinding noises, there's no real escape. It, it's just inevitable but uh, at least give it a shot of draining it out, maybe flushing it once and then refilling it and see what it does. But as far as an easy fix, unless that placates it, uh, it ain't gonna happen. You'll probably end up having to split the case, uh, split the case on it to get in there. Uh, Boy J, I want to know the Conrod and main general bearings for a CBR 600RR 7 through 12 color chart. I don't know that off the top of my head, but guys, if you'll mark that question, um, I'll look it up on, uh, on in Honda and uh, see if we can get that uh, answered so you can get the right bearings in there. Paul, well, that, that, <laughs> that what stinks. Uh, there is no recoil starter rope to pull. I believe I could see the sight glass, but it's hard to tell if there was any in there. And at the key, I see the neutral light, uh, so, so almost good. Yeah, uh, I don't think there is a pull start on the on the Bayou. D Dub, good day, John. I recently removed my airbox on my Ninja 1000 and it ended up removing the sub TPS sensor. Are they hard to recalibrate? No, um, I don't remember the uh, the the resistance you're going to be looking at because you basically have. I think it's a four wire system and you've got power and then you basically have a potentiometer on, on the inside and you're aiming for a certain resistance at um at idle or with the plates closed or almost closed so that that resistance is the one that or that value is one you're going to need to look up guys if y'all um my guys if y'all would uh, note that one as well i can look it up and drop that at uh the beginning of next week's broadcast. <laughs> um, Paul saying 200 characters, too small to make a, com a complete statement. Can you change that? I think we're at the, uh, the whims and desires of the uh, universe that we call YouTube. So I don't think we can, uh, we can change that. Jinx. So, so cool. 20. I have an 04 rancher. What, what, how would I know if it's a, uh, FM or a two way? All right. Um, Honda makes it pretty easy on theirs. A, uh, an FM would be a four wheel drive manual shift. F FA would be a uh, four wheel drive automatic shift. Of course, the T M would be two wheel drive manual or, um, TA, which would be the two wheel drive uh, automatic, or yes, or it, it, the electronic shift, or TE, that's it. Uh, but I think they also made a A, which was an automatic. So you either have the manual, or E for electronic shift, or A for the automatic. But as far as knowing if it's two wheel drive or four wheel drive, if it's only two, won't be a front differential or um, CB axles up front. Asath, 
Hi, John. I, I just done the bearings on my R6. How do you get how do you get oil all over before starting up? I need to uh, prime the engine. All right. Um, so I'm taking that you didn't use the semi lube in there. OK, it's not the end of the world. Fill it up with oil. Um, disconnect your coils and your fuel pump or maybe even take out your plugs where it's easy for it to turn over. Just rotate it over a few times. It will not take long for the pump to prime up, start spitting up oil, you know, where it needs to go. Yeah, just make it easier, easier for your starter by taking out the plugs. And um, we don't want to flood it. So turn off or uh, take out your fuse for your um, fuel pump or just disconnect it. Uh, Paul saying, uh, get, get their VIN and call Partzilla. Okay. I'll look at it. Thanks, John. I'll look at the values. Well, we'll, uh, we'll get to it. If you don't, Panagio just came back. Thanks, John. I was like, <laughs> I pay taxes and now that, and now they don't know my name. <sighs> I don't know what's going on with them. I'm still confused. It's our government in action. I'll just leave it at that. Evidently, you have the same problems in Sweden as we uh, do in the fine US of A, but I'm not complaining. First world problems. So we're having a little bit of trouble getting some parts shipped from me to you. We will persevere. I don't give up easily. Well, ever actually. I sent, would Castrol 10W40 part synthetic be okay in an R6? Yeah, that's, uh, I think it'd be fine as long as it's made for motorcycles because what you're dealing with is a, uh, a wet, wet clutch system and regular automotive Castrol oil. You don't want to do that because it doesn't know how to interact with a uh, fiber disc. And that's what you've got. And if you put regular old um, Castrol semi synthetic made for a car in your motorcycle, it's probably going to make your clutch slip, burn up and then that's not going to be, that's not going to be good because then, then, uh, then you got all these particles flying around in there and stopping up different oil passageways and filters and oil coolers, et cetera, et cetera. So only in, in extreme conditions, if you were down a court out on the road and you needed to dump in a little bit just to get you back. Okay. But no other, other than that, stay with your, uh, motorcycle grade, um, oils. Uh, Jinxo said, I'm sorry, I meant whether it's a 2A or an A. Mm, I'm not sure I'm following when you on that other than the description I gave on it, it being you know, either E for or M for manual, E for electronic or A for automatic. Uh, John China, when is the drawing for the custom CR 450? I think we're running that until the 4th. Is that the correct date guys? J uh, January 4th, or are we ending it on the, on December 30th? So I bet you the guys will chime in in a second and, um, then, uh, then we'll, then we'll know. And I sent the saying this Activa 4T. 10W40 oil. I have not used this brand. I'm not familiar with that either, but um, you just want to make sure that it is a, is an oil made for the motorcycle or power sports industry. Otherwise, asking for trouble. But Paul already looked it up. Yes, I was right. It's the 4th. So we'll be doing that through January 4th. And then the, they'll announce a winner, I would assume, We'll get in touch with the person via email and then uh, get all their information. And like I said, I, I'll still have a little bit more work to do on it um, because everything's done except for the race tech suspension. Now I've already rebuilt the suspension front and back, all the different pivot points and the, uh, the seals, I mean, the, you, you name it, but race tech has a system where you enter in or I enter in, when I bought, uh, purchased each one of these kits for the forks and the, uh, the rear shock, and I put in the, the riders conditions there, the height, the weight, 
what type of riding they're going to do, the environment they're going to be in. Because let's, let's face it, you know, you put Scott Champion on a, a 450 and you're going to set it up a whole lot different than you would for me <laughs> riding around on some trails at my age. Well, I used to race, but no. Nah. They say with age comes the cage. I don't have a problem with that. But at any rate, um, whoever wins it, we'll find out their information and then I'll pull it back apart, set it up just for them. And then uh, we'll get it delivered to them one way or another. I don't think our team has talked about that yet. Um, we'll come up with something inter interesting, uh, a way to get it to them, him or her, whoever it may be. Asant has also asked me, do I need to use bike coolant over car coolant can work? Definitely be careful there. Um, you want to use a uh, coolant that is uh, compatible with aluminum. Now, now I know just about every radiator out there is uh, mostly aluminum, but once again, I would, I would steer clear of just trying to save a couple of bucks with the, uh, the standard you know, green stuff that you pick up at, you know, whatever store is nearby. Uh, I've always noticed that the, uh, just the way it feels, the, uh, the stuff that we use in the motorcycles and the side-by-sides and ATVs, it, it seems to be a little bit thinner feeling to me. I'm not sure if that's just my imagination or if there's anything to it. So I, I, I would definitely be hesitant about using anything in the automotive realm over on the power sport side, unless I absolutely had to. And with us here shipping, you know, we can get to you quick. There's no reason not to just order the right stuff from us. Gino is asking me an 86 TRX 250R. Oh boy. <laughs> new build, new clutch plates. I soak them in a new basket has set for six months and won't engage. Have not ran since you, you built it the first time. So she's constantly. Um, so it, it, the, the plates are not having, uh, they're not in contact enough for it to actually move. Are you sure you got your plate count right? And I don't think there's an adjustment disc like you find on a, um, who did that? Uh, Kawasaki, the, uh, the ninjas, the, the, uh, the 600 had an adjustment disc in there. You could get different thicknesses to, to get your stack height. But anyway, I, I would go back and check the stack height. And it sounds like to me, like you may be missing a disc. Just a, just a thought. Six months and you didn't start it? Man, you're as bad as I am. <laughs> All right. Chris is asking me, is there much in the works for an RM at RMX4 series unit. We haven't purchased one where we haven't brought in one yet. I mean, as you can tell, when I get in on a project, sometimes I get a little carried away. <laughs> uh, are you curious what that is? Um, remember that 2016 uh, YZ1000R? Well, we're replacing the frame, but guess what? That's not a 2016 frame. That's a 2019 frame that I just did a gusset kit front to rear. The reason I went for a 19 is we are updating it with the uh, radi uh, radiator relocated to the back. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, I know they make relocation kits for the radiator, but since when am I going to do something easy? Come on. <laughs> uh, that one's going to be fun once, once, once we're done with it, am I going out of focus or do I just look that way? Uh, probably a little bit of both. Oh, do, 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 do. he's going to get this out of the cool. Very good. Um, Joe is asking me 96 KX 125 Kickstarter bolt. Oh, go away. I don't want to update my computer. Kickstarter bolt missing when I bought didn't see i didn't see the threads inside the kick gear it does not look like the bolt broke off just looks like the threads are covered by some metal or something ideas sounds like it stripped and fell out and not unless there was a uh, a retaining bolt on the other side which i kind of doubt because that's a, a pinch situation is it not um 
the best way I'd say is, you know, go look at the uh, the drawings and see how it's supposed to be put together. You know, just bring up your, your make and model and see what's supposed to be in there because I don't know that one off the top of my head. I sent this saying, how long do you normally uh, take to ship goods to South Africa? Um, a long way for you. You're definitely a long way from me. I, I have no idea what the shipping times are. Um, especially in today's age. I mean, a couple of years ago, we could probably tell you within a day or two, but with the shipping channels being the way they are right now, I wouldn't even know how to guess. Um, but if you would give the customer service guys a call and they can probably give you a decent estimate, but don't hold it to us because we don't have control over that. Once we put it in a box and it goes out the, uh, the door of one of our distribution centers, that's, we've done all we can do. Well, other than tracking it. Jinxo also asked me, I rebuilt my hand-me-down Honda Rancher's car for the first time after my dad had it set for five years. Woohoo! After riding around 50 times, it has leaked that gas out of the drain tube uh, five times. It sounds like your, uh, uh, the, the jet for your um, uh, float valve is is leaking and on the 350 i don't think that's replaceable the best you or the uh the the seat is not replaceable the best you can do is just get some car cleaner on the end of a q-tip and make sure that um it's uh got this as clean as it can be also also make sure that your 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 float wheel level is not set too high because if it's set too high it's going to run out either through that drain tube or back into the engine either 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 of which is not a uh, not a not a way to go fly high nice shop you have john yeah this is uh partzilla has pretty much let me get everything that I, I needed and this is a full functioning shop here this this is the the real deal and um i've got a, a nice little little niche carved out back here a lot of fun uh, my latest toy is that a little welder back there. That's actually a really nice welder back there <sighs> to the people that weld every day and then are really good at it. I salute you. That is an art form. My welds will hold together, but damn, y'all make it look easy. And it's not. <laughs> All right, Camden. There you go. We already flew through another 30 minutes. Camden, we'll, we'll finish up with you. Hey, John, my 21 KX250 it will sometimes still move when I had the clutch pulled in and the Viking gear. Do you know what that could be? The clutch is fine when I'm riding. Huh. Well, it sounds like she's not disengaging all the way. And what kind of shape is your your cable in? Uh, it's a 21. How many, how many hours do you have on it? If that cable is has not been lubed properly and it's not getting the full travel, it may have some tension on it, even though you've released it, and, it, and it's not wanting to uh, to uh, fully engage. Or right, let's see if I'm reading right. No, oh, you're pulled in, and the bike still and the bike still wants to move. Well, once again, how many hours are on the bike? How many hours? Because it sounds like she's trying to still creep forward so i wonder what your wear is on the basket and on that uh on your your cable itself so take a look at those two yeah because once you're moving yeah it doesn't matter as long as it's engaging all the way but evidently it's not disengaging all the way at this point all right y'all got a couple more uh well yeah we'll go and get through them Mike has asked me, I've been rebuilding my engine and following your videos. Thanks. You are welcome. I've been waiting for parts for the engine. So it's been sitting. Do I need to do any special before I start it for the first time? Um, depending on the build and how deep you were, you know, having to go through it, especially if it's been sitting, hopefully used um, assembly lube instead of just uh, regular oil. And if you know you're going to fire up an engine, I have no problem just using oil. But if it's going to sit, that oil will seep down and then uh, it will lubricate it on the startup that first startup can be a little bit rough on it 
you may want to, as we were talking about earlier, you may not have been in the chat it, with a, a, a full rebuild, pull your plugs, turn off your fuel pump, crank it over a few times just to get everything primed up, then give it, give it, a, give it the beans. Lightning has asked me, hey, John, so I appreciate that you have the stream every Friday. I try. I've learned a ton for you. Two wheels, four wheels, new and old. Hope you have a great Christmas, New Year. Well, I appreciate that. And the same goes to you and to your family. All right. All right, guys. 3.30. That is it. Well, we're going to go ahead and sign off at this point. And everybody have a great weekend, as usual. Another great week. And God willing, I will see you again on Friday at 3 o'clock. Don't forget, Weiss Code. That's the code. Go enter to win that machine. I want an enthusiast to win it. Please. And y'all are enthusiasts. See y'all later.